How powerful is Cox Internet? Powerful enough to let your band members in Vegas, Phoenix, and Rhode Island jam like you're all in the same garage. Get Cox Internet powered by fiber with America's fastest download speeds. It's Internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, always building better. Cox Internet is connected to the premises via coaxial connection. Speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms and other restrictions may apply. Analysis by Ookla speed test intelligence data. Fixed median download speeds. USQ3 2023. Trying to get home to stream that highly anticipated series finale? Well, it may take longer with T-Mobile 5G home internet. You could be stuck with slower speeds during the busiest hours because you share your network with cell phone users. Why deal with that? Switch to Cox Internet with two times faster download speeds than T-Mobile 5G home internet during peak hours. Plus, Cox offers free panoramic Wi-Fi equipment and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Why not switch? Visit cox.com slash 5G home for details. T-Mobile prioritizes certain T-Mobile phone users over home internet users during times of congestion. Welcome to Beyond the Bridge with psychic medium and animal communicator, Samantha Jones. We're glad you're here and hope that over the next hour, Samantha and her guests will help you connect to the magic of the universe, as well as to your loved ones and pets, both here and beyond the bridge. And now, Samantha Jones. Hello, friends, and welcome to this week's episode of Beyond the Bridge with Samantha Jones. I'm your host, Samantha Jones, and thank you so much for being here today. I have a very exciting show for you today. I hope that wherever you are in the world, especially if you're in crazy parts of the United States, that you're doing okay where you are because uh, I know there's crazy weather everywhere. I'm in Las Vegas and it has not stopped raining, but um, and that's very unusual for here. So I hope everybody's doing okay wherever you are in the country and in the world. So today my guest is Mystic Molly. If you have been on TikTok or even on Instagram, you may have seen Molly around. She is a wonderful tarot reader and we have worked together before on my radio show. And so I had to bring her in to introduce you guys. So hi, Molly. How are you today? Hello. I'm hi, great. Sweetie. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so excited that you're here. Me too. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. So why don't you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, uh, you know, just what you do, where you came from, that kind of thing. Okay. Well, I am Mystic Molly. Uh, Molls for short. That's my nickname. Um, I am a tarot reader. I'm a Reiki practitioner. I like to call myself an alchemist. So like I'm really into like manifesting um, really devoted to healing and just being, you know, stepping into a really authentic time of my life where I've struggled most of life, my life being authentic. And I think a lot of people can relate. Um, but I work from home. I'm a single mommy. I'm a mom and dad. And uh, my daughter is amazing. And I love her. And I reside in Pilot Mountain, North Carolina. It is a tiny, like, little country, calm, peaceful area. Um, I grew up here. I moved away when I got married. And then I, you know, I resisted coming back. But it actually has been the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, but, yeah, I'm an, I, you know, I have animals. I love my animals. I love my crystals. I love my really nurturing soul so I, I like to take care of things um but yeah i guess that sums me up a little bit <laughs> awesome. awesome i love it how did you get into tarot was that like the first thing that you started doing or like where did that come from okay so i have always been a little weirdo so i've always <laughs> like been drawn to astrology and like, so I'm 44. When I grew up, you know, we didn't have these social media platforms. We had dial up, like, you know, and I remember at a young age, I somehow came across runes and I made my own set of crystal runes at age 13. I still don't know 
how I got the information, I don't remember it. But I've always been tapped in. Um, so I've always had really strange experiences with the other side, um, with spirituality, being very connected to angels and things like that. But I would say tarot came later in my life. I found it about 10 years ago. I started reading professionally probably four years ago. Um, and now I do it full time. It's something I'm really passionate about. Um, I really like guiding people and I, because I want to be that person that I didn't have when I was younger and I needed that. Right. So I like to be that role for other people because I know what it feels like, you know, to not be understood, um, to not be supported or feel like you can't even talk to someone about what you experience. So tarot came later. It came um, around the same time that I made up my mind to um, divorce my husband. And so it all kind of, that's when like my second awakening happened that really put me on this path. Very nice. I think that I found you, I know I found you on TikTok and I can't remember if it was after COVID or what, but you know, I had just kind of gotten into tarot myself. Like from the beginning of my spiritual journey, I've, I've like messed around with tarot, but I've never like used it as, you know, a main form until recently. And it's funny because that was one of the things that drew me to you is like, I could probably learn a lot from her. And actually one of the first things that I learned from you was about this deck, the light oh, seers. Yeah. I love this deck. Yeah. Yeah. I For anybody that's a lot. Yeah. Yours are really worn in. And I, there's something about like worn in tarot that I just love. It was like as a kid, for whatever reason, I always wanted a worn in tarot deck. Isn't that weird? Like, <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you, I have been on the search for an antique tarot deck that heavily used. So I get it. There is something about the energy that's in that deck of cards from continuous use. Yeah. Um, it, they just hold so much energy and wisdom and knowledge. And honestly, the thing is, I think we're going to like, de I would like to debunk some myths. So yes, please. a psychic medium is not a rarity. Like everyone has the ability to tap in to their clear abilities. Everyone has the ability to read tarot. Um, if you feel called to it, you need to listen to that calling. Even if you never read for another individual, use it as a tool to guide you like every single day. I don't know what, honestly, I can't believe, I don't know how I lived without it. Like for real, <laughs> it's, it's become a part of me. Yeah. You know, it has for me too, but I'll be really honest with you that I still, when I'm pulling cards for myself, I I'm nervous because you know that those tarot cards, they don't pull punches. They are direct with you. So if you're asking a question, they're going to give you the answer to that question, even if it's not a great answer, you know, that's I, yeah, a lot of times the ego gets involved and it's like, so say you pull the tower card and you're like, Oh no, I'm gonna be just fine. I'm gonna be just fine. I got this. I got this. That's me. But then later on, like it's something will completely just like explode in your life, and you're like, oh, well, dang. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I had to watch my mouth. Damn it all. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, I, I think the yeah. ego, the ego is fear based. The ego holds us back. The ego prevents us from seeing the truth in all areas. Not just. You're the absolutely ego. right. Absolutely. And, and I've learned that a lot from tarot, like even with my own abilities and trying to predict things for myself, where the, the ego steps in and like tells you that, oh, that can't be for you. Like that's not possible. Um, I, before Christmas was drawing cards for myself and the tower kept coming up and I was like, oh, what is this? And so a friend of mine pulled cards for me and it was in the fourth week of December that she said, there's going to be a tower moment. And there was, our, our daughter was here and she was kind of having a, a hard time, you know, from school and stuff. And so there was a tower moment. And I really knew that that's what it was going to be. Like I could feel it in me, but it's like, nah, it can't be, it can't possibly be. But 
our lives are just as normal as anybody else's. So it's like, why would I assume that the tarot cards aren't going to tell me the same thing that they're going to tell somebody else, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, um, you know, when I'm reading for clients and they want advice on like maybe starting their own practice, I tell them whatever you're drawn to as far as the deck, get that deck. And it doesn't even have to be tarot. It could be Oracle and Oracle is very different from tarot. Um, but like use it, pull one card a day. So a lot of people want to like start with let's, I don't understand that one card. So let's clarify and clarify. And I yes. tell them when when you get to that point to where you're pulling 10 cards, you've lost it. You've just, you're grasping for straws here. And I'm like, pull one card a day, look at it, put yourself in the card, learn about it, grow your knowledge. And then later on, maybe, you know, pull two to three, but like, you don't want to be pulling half the deck. Like you're not going to get the answer. You already got your answer. Like, you That's right. Answer. You don't want to see it. <laughs> And I, you, I struggle with that sometimes. I'm like, damn. <laughs> How do you think they work? Like, have you ever thought about this? How do they work? Like, as far as, like, you shuffle like I do. You don't lay them out in front of you. You shuffle, right? So is there a little energy that's sitting there going, flick? Like, what's going on? <laughs> this me, is a question I ask so, myself. So when I'm dealing with tarot and I've got cards in my deck, I immediately envision this, like, light from my root chakra all the way up to source. And it's literally, I'm a vessel and they use me to pull. So I'll, and you always want to set an intention. So there needs to be, I do see several readers will be like, I really don't have any intention, but you have to have some sort of intention. Yeah. You may not, it may be like all the way back here, mm -hmm. but there's something in your mind that's going to be pulling the card. So intentions are great. Asking a question and Spirit, regardless if you I always have decks around me. So mm -hmm. regardless if you like shuffle like this and you split the deck and here's our first card, there's your message. It doesn't matter how you shuffle, whatever feels like that's the card for you. I like poppers, but every once in a while like something will stick out. Like how that's sticking out. Yeah. Unexpected. Like things like mm -hmm. that. Happen. And I think everyone has their own way of like, you know, shuffling and what they feel comfortable with. And I do feel like it is an energy that is pulling this information out. We don't work alone. And that is another thing. You pick up, this is like a portal. This is a portal. So you not only are getting connected to other entities, um, spirit, spirit guide, source, um, you there's always dark with light. So you always want to make sure you're extremely protected. So what does that look like? A big, bright light. And for me, it looks like an egg, you know, because it starts at your feet and it goes all the way around. And visualizations and meditation will help you to, you know, protect yourself and envision. So that's, you know, my belief on it. That's what I feel occurs and I'm never alone when I'm reading, so it's not me necessarily. Right. It's my connection to other. And, you know, if I read for a client, um, I'll ask if they have any guides that want to come forward, if they have any ancestors. I love to work with ancestors because, and it's the ancestors that are supporting you in this lifetime. So they really, they're rooting you on. They're your biggest cheerleaders along with your guides, and they are a guide in this lifetime. So, I like to work really closely with them because a lot of people who are on this spiritual path, you're not just healing yourself or bettering yourself or awakening to your truth. You're also doing generational healing. So you're, yeah. we're always connected past, present, future. We are connected here. So yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. I hope that makes sense. Uh, totally. It totally okay. does. And it's one of those things I just, I love to think about because the way that sometimes the cards fly out is so weird, you know, it's like, and they're so accurate that it's just, yeah, it's definitely something that I think about. Especially yeah. if like you see a card in your head and then it comes out. 
I'm yes. like, that will never get old to me. I'm like, shut up, spirit. <laughs> or like, so this morning I have some subscription clients and so like a monthly subscription. And so I try to draw cards from them like uh, once a week or whatever. And so one of these clients works with kids. She's a tutor. And so I have my healing with the angels cards and I start shuffling them and children flies out. And I was like, that's really obvious. Like, come on. And I put it back in and guess what? It came right back out. And that's like, another, <laughs> I've done that before. Like I'll get a card and I'm like, eh, I don't think that's for me or yeah. that doesn't feel right. And it will come back out. It's for you. <laughs> yeah. They're like, no, 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 this is for you. And you need to listen to this. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and take our first break. Uh, when we come back, Molly and I are going to talk more about spirituality, spiritual awakenings, whatever feels right, because I just love talking to you. So glad you're here. So let's take our break, everybody. We'll be right back after these brief messages. What if they were trying to get home to stream that highly anticipated series finale? Well, it may take longer with T-Mobile 5G home internet. You could be stuck with slower speeds during the busiest hours because you share your network with cell phone users. Why deal with that? Switch to Cox Internet with two times faster download speeds than T-Mobile 5G home internet during peak hours. Plus, Cox offers free panoramic Wi-Fi equipment and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Why not switch? Visit cox.com slash 5G home for details. T-Mobile prioritizes certain T-Mobile phone users over home internet users during times of congestion. How powerful is Cox Internet? Powerful enough to let your band members in Vegas, Phoenix, and Rhode Island jam like you're all in the same garage. Get Cox Internet powered by fiber with America's fastest download speeds. It's Internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, always building better. Cox Internet is connected to the premises via coaxial connection. Speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms and other restrictions may apply. Analysis by Ookla speed test intelligence data. Fixed median download speeds. US Q3 2023. A super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair. What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Beyond the Bridge. So glad that you're here today. Today, we are joined by Mystic Molly, and we are just having some great conversation about spirituality and tarot and all things fun, fun, fun. Um, you know what I wanted to talk about is your Oracle decks. First, I think it's important for people to know the difference between tarot and Oracle. So maybe you can just give a brief you know, rundown of what that is. But I know that you have several decks that you've worked on and published, and so I'd love to hear about those. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, we'll start with the difference with tarot. So tarot is like a journey to enlightenment and it's got major arcanas, which go from the full to the world card. And it tells a story. It really does. I think that's the biggest thing with tarot. It tells a story and it you know represents major life events, but also everyday 
occurrences and the people in and around our lives. Oracle decks, most of them can be like uh, messages from your ancestors or an angels or they're they're different because they may some of them may be similar to tarot but they're completely different they have mm. don't have the like major arcanas they don't have the representations of like the kings the queens the pages the knights they're more for um for me i think oracle is more for people who don't necessarily want to learn tarot but they need that guide. And, you know, most Oracle decks, they come. I have a deck over here. I'm going to grab it. Yeah, go grab it. Yeah. Oh, shh. Okay, so this is my little kid. Oh, wow. <laughs> Love it. Um, Mine are behind me. You can't see all of them, but they're back there. <laughs> so, like, this is an Oracle deck. And, like, they, they have, like, words words on them and so we'll show you some tarot tarot is so different like four pentacles this is everyday things you know what card i drew psychic ha that's <laughs> it's um, awesome oracle decks are meant to like help you tap into your intuition and give you guidance it, they're not normally i don't feel like i don't use them to like predict the future yeah tarot was more for like looking into past, present, and future energies. But for me, um, Oracle decks are more of a guidance. And like, what do I need to know today? And what is a message for me? Things like that. I think that's the biggest difference. Yeah. And they're normally smaller. You know, I think most of them had between 40 to like 70 cards in a deck. But, you know, they're also different. So I have my favorite one. I love talking about this stuff. It's the Moonology deck. Yeah. Nice. My I have that one. I love it. that deck. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially during like full moons and like new moons and things. I really, I really love those. And so I, the, I was trying to think how in the world did I even get on this journey of creating my own decks? Well, my very first deck, the Mystic Molly deck. I, I had someone named Ella sort of psychic. She's on TikTok and she's great. She helped me. So nice. she, I gave her my ideas. She helped me create it. And then she taught me how to do it myself. So I, I have published one, two, three on my own. And I have six more in the making. And nice. it's, you know, it, she helped me tap into a creative side of me that has been laying dormant here my whole life. So it is a creative outlet. It's, and I'm really passionate about it yeah. and it's fun. And, you know, I, I feel like the decks that I use any of my followers or anyone who's into Tara, they're well-rounded. So like, if you want to know about love, I got love decks. If you want like spirituality, I have an awakening deck, which is focused on your spiritual growth and development. And there will be part twos of most of my decks coming out by the end of the year. So, so people know where can they order those cards? Okay, so my website is mysticmolly1111.com. And there is a shop option. So it's my booking website. There is an option to shop. And I run it through there opposed to a third party because they come from China. Yeah. And so, it, you know, if you're looking at like uh, what that would look like to ship to someone, it, it would be a lot. So um, that's why I get them to me and I get them pushed out. Makes sense. Absolutely. We have a bunch of comments, so I want to read some of these. Yeah. So there's Robin. She said, hey, ladies, I am here from North Carolina watching from Molly's TikTok invite. So hi, Robin. Hello, Robin. Here. Yeah. And then we have Holly. Holly says, good evening, ladies. I'm so glad I could be here for this. We are glad, too. Thank you, Holly, for being here. And Sharon says, hello. Hi, Sharon. 
And Stacy says, I almost missed this. <laughs> well, we're glad that you didn't. For anybody that does, or if you've missed any portion of it, it you can rewatch it on YouTube or on Facebook Live. Like this will publish on to my Facebook, um, so you can find it there. And then we have um, Julie that says, hello, Samantha, Mystic Molly, you ladies are fascinating, hanging on to every word. Thank you so much. Hi. Yay. That makes me so happy. Yeah. Yeah. And then let's see what else we have. Um, okay, so there's one, a, a, I can't, Apostle, some, I can't pronounce this name, but they said, plug your site. So, which is what we're doing. We're plugging your site. And a bunch of other hellos from Tiana, from my sister, Amanda, from Denise. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Love having you all here for sure. Yep. So I wanted to talk about a couple of things that I think we both, um, you know, like to talk about that might be interesting to our listeners. And one of those things is like the spiritual awakening and the process of it and, you know, how confusing it can be, because I'm sure that there's a lot of, of our viewers here that have gone through it or maybe are going through it right now. And it can be a very uncomfortable, but wonderful experience. So any advice there or anything you want to say about the, that process? The less you resist and the more you surrender, you'll make it up way easier on yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Little love muffins. Like I get it. <laughs> and you know, you may go through periods to where you feel like you're losing your medulla of one God. I'm like, there were times I'm like, Am I losing it? Am I crazy? Because you, you just, the thing is you're awakening. You're waking up from a sleep and it's really like, you know, we're from school to work from our parents. Like we're conditioned to be in this like loop box and you work hard your whole life and you do this and you do that. Well, when you go through a spiritual awakening, you're breaking out of that box. Yeah. And you're, you're starting to think for yourself and feel for yourself and starting to understand things the way the universe communicates. The first thing I noticed was angel numbers. Yeah. And I was like, what? I was like, what is it? What, what, what is it? It's like, I had no idea. And I also had no one to ask. Yeah. Like, it was crazy because TikTok was more of a musically thing. Like when I started waking up, it's not like I, I could go on there and get tarot readings then and like this and to make me understand, but it is very uncomfortable, which all change is, and it's definitely not for the weak minded or the weak part. And the pe people that do go through the awakenings, they've got something to do. <laughs> yeah. to, you're, you're meant to wake up for a reason mm -hmm. because you're something beyond what you can even comprehend when you first start waking up and it may take years and it may not yeah. and it's so you can find your purpose and live your life accordingly to that purpose exactly right and you know what when I first started going through it and I heard that term spiritual awakening because I really didn't even know what it was I really thought that it was going to be mostly about my beliefs, like my religious beliefs. And, and it is, that does have something to do with it. But I found that the bigger part of it is myself and oh. deconstructing myself and building a new Samantha that understands all of these things and is a different type of person. I don't even know how to explain it. It's like, you know, you take everything about yourself and you pick yourself apart so that you can be the person that you're supposed to be so that you can help other people. You're That's absolutely, oh my God, absolutely right. Mm -hmm. I think the religious part is definitely a part of the process. And I think that kind of comes first before we um, really go into self. Because mm -hmm. it feels like you have to break out of the religious norm to get to and the way I like to describe it is having a, a jigsaw puzzle that you've put together and you throw it on the floor <laughs> and it breaks the parts. Yeah. Now you've got to figure out how to, I got to put myself back together, but in a different way. So the puzzle might look all different the second time you do it. And it really is. It's like you're taking these parts and you're getting rid of it and you're releasing the boundaries and you're starting to understand 
like relationships. Yeah. I think it's a huge one. The relationship with yourself, um, the relationship with like your trauma and how it kind of molded you into the person that you've become. And I think a lot of people, the relationship part, and I'm not just talking about like romantic, I'm talking more of the relationship with yourself and how maybe like your childhood, you, you know, you were, you had trauma or you weren't supported or you weren't loved. And so when you get older and you go through this awakening, you're really wanting to understand, well, how this happened to me. I struggle with certain things in my life. It's all about course correcting. Like, how can I heal this? How can I overcome this? And how can I let it go? Because it's no longer a part of me. Like, it's something that occurred. Um, my life might have been forever changed, but going through the awakening, we there's this level of forgiveness and compassion and mm. empathy. So, like, if, if you'd have seen pictures of me, like, 10 years ago, you'd be like, that, is, that can't be the same person. And it's true for yeah. you. It's true for the followers. That, and I know they've gone through the awakenings. Um, but it, you have more than one. And it's almost like a death in the first cycle. Um, when you start waking up, you're going to go through different ego deaths. You're going to go through different cycles. You're going to be tested like you yeah. wouldn't believe. Um, you're going to see lessons everywhere. So, like, for me, even if something like an experience is negative, I always try to find a positive uh, yeah. with that, like, negative so there's always something to learn and i think that's the biggest part about life is like we're all teachers and we're all students and we're supposed to learn from each other and grow and you know people that haven't gone through the awakening they just don't get that yeah so i yeah. wish i could like wave a little wand and just be like okay the whole world <laughs> right i know wake up, wake up. yeah can you imagine what this world would be like if everybody was awake? It would there be so different. Be war. No. There wouldn't be war. There wouldn't be hate. There wouldn't be racism. There wouldn't be like, oh my God, the lack of care for another human being in this world is really scary. There would be people, we're meant to love and support each other. Like that's the one part of this journey and the gift of being a human even though at times it might not feel like a gift, yeah. you know, it really is a gift. And if everyone could take the greed and get rid of the greed and that type of thing, like greed is hate and hate is greed and it's selfish. And through the awakening process, if you were that type of person before, you're no longer that individual because you've done the work. That's right. I don't know that person that I was before the spiritual awakening. And a lot of times I look at pictures of her, like what you were saying. And I go, what, <laughs> you know, who, who is that person? But that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to grow. We're supposed to learn from those mistakes and learn from the traumas that we had. And that's all a big part of this. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and take our next break. T-Mobile 5G home internet can leave you with slower speeds during its busiest hours. Why deal with that? Switch to Cox Internet with two times faster download speeds than T-Mobile 5G home internet during peak hours. Visit cox.com slash 5G home to learn more. This year, Kind Snacks is inviting you to leave behind the diet and wellness fads that are no longer serving you. Instead, grab a Kind Bar, a nutritious and delicious way to eat more of the real, whole, recommended foods that we're not eating enough of, like nuts and whole grains. Because all Kind Nut Bars lead with the first ingredient, nutrient-dense whole nuts, and they're gluten-free. With great flavors everyone will love, including caramel almond and sea salt and peanut butter dark chocolate. So shut out the noise, trust your taste buds, and shop Kind Bars at Amazon today. Uh, when we come back, we will talk more with Mystic Molly. So stay tuned, friends. We'll be right back. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality? But it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating. Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like... 
I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome back to Beyond the Bridge, friends. Today we are talking with Mystic Molly about all things spiritual. I have a couple of questions that I thought would be so much fun to talk about because in this line of work and in the spiritual awakening, there's so much that goes on and there's so many amazing stories that I know you've had. I have so many of them. Um, But I was wondering, what is the weirdest thing that's happened to you? Um, Like you in particular, like like maybe um, even something you might consider a superpower. Um, oh, Oh, God, let's see. I can tell you about a really crazy experience that happened at the beginning of my spiritual awakening. But as far as a superpower, well, maybe this is a little bit telepathy and premonition dreams are my like superpowers. Um, especially if we are connected. Um, there's not really much hiding from me. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I can you feel go. you. I can, I can hear you. And, and it can be really hard for other people. So, if well, people want to know why I'm single, well, that's part of the problem. <laughs> um, because it's going to take it's going to take a, a certain type of man to be comfortable being in my life because you can't hide from you know someone who does this, and you know that. Yeah. Um. So I would say those are my superpowers. Uh, I have lots of dreams that come true, but I had a really crazy experience happen five years ago and I saw an I saw an angel I'm gonna call her an angel that no one else saw so I was coming back from Charlotte here I still worked there and I came up on a car accident it had just happened no one had stopped the car was destroyed and something in me was like pull over I don't know how to help anyone in that situation, but something was like, pull over now. I pulled over, jumped out of the car, ran to this woman. There were no doors left on the car. I'm getting emotional. Holy shit. Um, There were no doors on the car. It was, I, I thought she was dead. She had blood all over her and I got near her and I just started praying and she looked at me and started screaming, help me, help me. There were other people at this point who had pulled over and started calling 911. And then I like turn my back and I turn back around and there's a woman in the back seat with her. And she looks at me and she just, she's glowing and she's holding this woman. When I tell you, I've never experienced something like that in my whole entire life. And I looked at the person next to me, they're talking to me. And I was like, she, is she alone? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, okay, 
so no one else can see this. And I've had things like this happen throughout my lifetime, but this had, it had been a really long time. And this lady saved her. This woman, I really feel like this woman would have died had that angel not been there. Um, and it changed my life forever, like forever. It was almost like a test from the divine to being like, okay, are you prepared for how your life's going to be? A test. And, you know, it was, it was wild. <laughs> and like, now I've noticed like strange things like that happen kind of, you know, randomly with me. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I don't see a lot like visually like that. Most of what I see is in my third eye, but I actually, so we moved into this house about four months ago. And one of the things that we joked about was that there better not have been anybody that died in this house because the last house that we lived in was owned by, it was, we rented it and it was owned by this lady whose husband had passed away. They lived in this house originally when it was, when it was built. Right. But I would see him. And he would tell me they need to sell this house. They need to sell this house. Like I want them to sell it. Well, they, they did after we moved out, which is great. But I, his presence was so strong there and I had never felt anything like that. And I thought, I don't really like that, <laughs> you know? So then we move in here and there's weird things happening in this house. But one day, like a few, it was like maybe a month or so ago, my husband's looking at the stairs and he's like, what's that? And he's like, there's something there. And he starts seeing like ectoplasm, like the, like fog. Right. And I stand up and I start like looking and I notice on the stairs that there's this silhouette of a little girl and she has these like buns on the top of her head, which I've never really seen people wear their hair like that. And ever since that happened, I've seen people wearing their hair like that. It's been really weird. But like I could see her like figure and the dress that she was wearing, like it was a big poofy dress. And then like a week later, I was asleep on the couch and I woke up to her going, hello. And then the other night, my husband heard her laughing. Aww. And I've heard her laugh a couple of times too. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> Why? You know, it's because, because I know, and you know, they don't stay here. Like they're not stuck here. That little girl's not stuck here, but what does she want? You know, what, what yeah. does she want? <laughs> you know what I've, I've asked, I ask questions when I see things like that. I like ask questions like, you know, is there something you want to tell me? <laughs> Totally. I was so taken back. I like, couldn't, I was like, Whoa, but yeah, that's, I really need to, I need to figure out what it is. And if somebody did die in this house or what, cause this house isn't that old. So it's weird, but yeah, there's these weird things that happen to you when you develop these abilities that people don't really understand so much. And it's like, it changes everything about your life because it changes who you are, but it also changes the way that you see things. And that makes it difficult, like having relationships, like what you were saying about having like a man in your life is that you have to find yourself a, a spiritual man or yeah. somebody that, that understands yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Because otherwise you're just going to be like, no, I, I can't do it. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. If you're asleep at the wheel, sorry, you're not for me. Yeah, but totally. You're right. And it, you know what? These spirits and these other entities and it goes beyond someone who used to be alive as a human like it goes way beyond that yeah. when they know that you're sensitive they show themselves but they don't show normally they won't show themselves until like you're really ready especially when you're older when you're a kid i had some terrifying things like yeah. and i bought my gifts and my daughter is actually in the process and we've had this discussion so if you have kids um and like you're you know, sensitive and your, your kid more than likely will be, I tell her it is up to you if you want to be connected to the other side or not, just because I am doesn't mean that it's for you. So right. the way, I, the way I raised her is like, you have your own mind, you have your own nav avatar, you have your own life. I want you to, you know, to figure out what you believe in and what you want. And so she struggles because it scares her and yeah. she, very sensitive so yeah. she was like i don't want to see them and i don't want to feel them and i said well tell them that tell yeah. them that. and they'll listen like i will have i've seen dark things float 
along my ceiling and I have a rule in my bedroom get the F out especially when my door is closed no I am not okay I'm not like you have to have bad you really do and all you have to do is say it and don't be afraid because you got control over this you really do but that was a game changer when I was like I've got control over this and if I want them here great if I don't feel comfortable, they have to, they just have to go. Like, you got to go. Yes. I love that. And I think that's important to the, the viewers that are maybe going through this is understanding that you do have a say. Absolutely. Oh. Like, when I first started this and it was such like a pro it's still prominent, but it was like at the beginning, it was different prominent. It was like, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what was going on. And I would take a shower and I would hear them talking to me in the shower. And it was weird. I was like naked in the shower and you're talking to me. And now it's just, it's second nature because I've come to realize they don't care. Like th this is just your human meat suit here. They're, they don't really care what, you know, about that stuff. So it, it got a lot easier. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. It's like you, you know, you just have to kind of go with it. I guess this process is very strange. It's very strange. It's, it's very strange, but I think it's like, it's so magical. Like, yeah, there's some, you see some weirdo, weirdo, weirdo stuff that makes you question everything. Yeah. But, like, it's magical. But you also, like, once you see it, you really can't unsee it. You can, you know, um, you can have control over setting boundaries and, like, what you want to experience. But once it's seen, like, no, you're not crazy. <laughs> yeah, you're not there's no seeing it yet. Yeah, it's, that was one thing I was kind of worried about at the beginning when I started developing my abilities was that it was just going to go away. And it, it doesn't. It just gets stronger and stronger until it's so much a part of you that, like, I don't care anymore what people think or, you know, they can have their beliefs. Just let me have mine. That's all. You know, it's it's like it's not up for discussion because this is who I am and this is what I I believe. And, you know, I feel like it should be that way with everybody that we should have that mutual respect of, OK, I may not agree with what you believe in, but believe it, you know, believe whatever you want to believe. And I think that's the, the big game changer with the awakening is like you no longer give a crap what other people think about you. Yeah. No, you don't. I, I, and, you know, in most of my family are, are Christians, you know, and so I'm very open with them. They know what I do. I know they don't support me. It's okay. It is what it is. But, you know, I don't judge them on their beliefs, and I don't really care what they think about mine because I'm I'm happy. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm trying not to drop the F-bomb. <laughs> You're doing very good. <laughs> You're so funny. Yeah, every time that Molly comes on the show, she talks about this because she was on the radio show twice. So then today I went on uh, Instagram and I saw that you made yourself a note about that. And I thought that was so cute. Yeah, no cussing. <laughs> That's awesome. I really don't think it's that big of a deal. Like, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the parameters are. It's like on the podcast, I just push a button that tells people that there's explicit, you know, words or whatever. But in this, I, I don't know. So just say what you will. <laughs> F this and F that. <laughs> yeah, totally. do, you, do you find that like people that have had similar experiences to you are drawn to you? That like you get clients that will tell you things and you're like, whoa, I went through that. Oh my God. So I, I've had multiple readings where I'm like, I'll get into someone's energy and I'm like, Oh shit. Well, no wonder you're, you wanted a reading from me. We have, our lives have been almost like simultaneously, but different. Like, you know, a lot of people that have a lot of childhood trauma will show up in my life, especially abuse. And we are I'm not really sure what we can talk about, but sexual abuse, physical, emotional, narcissistic people being around you, those people who have struggled, especially with sexual abuse, because I have a, I have 
terrible things, terrible things. So I tend to be a safe, a safe space for people who have experienced the same. Mm -hmm. And, and I know it almost immediately, especially if you get Reiki, like a Reiki session with me, mm -hmm. I can see it immediately the way you hold your body, the, where your emotions are stored. And I honestly, it makes me feel, um, very grateful that people even, you know, feel safe enough with me to be vulnerable and I, to get a reading or Reiki, you have to be a little vulnerable and trust someone. Yeah, for it's, sure. It's an energetic exchange here. And so, you know, even like not a, outside of like clients, but friends will show up in my life who've been through similar even romantic partners like I know it's there even if they don't talk to me about it like I know yeah so absolutely it's like you can tell you can yeah. energetically feel even if you don't know what everyone is yeah. you're for a reason totally well let's go to break and then when we come back I want to talk a little bit more about this we, we don't have long left but I, I definitely want to talk about it because I think there's there's a lot to it so stay tuned friends. this year kind snacks is inviting you to leave behind the diet and wellness fads that are no longer serving you instead grab a kind bar a nutritious and delicious way to eat more of the real whole recommended foods that we're not eating enough of like nuts and whole grains because all kind nut bars lead with the first ingredient, nutrient-dense whole nuts, and they're gluten-free. With great flavors everyone will love, including caramel, almond, and sea salt, and peanut butter dark chocolate. So shut out the noise, trust your taste buds, and shop Kind Bars at Amazon today. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger. Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. We'll be right back after these messages. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation welcome back to beyond the bridge friends today we have mystic molly joining us and i've had so much fun with you i love doing this i i would love to have you on anytime it's it's so awesome so fun i love it thank you so much i will come on anytime Anytime. Awesome. I, I love that. So we had some questions in the comments because if you're on Facebook or YouTube, we can see your comments. One of them was from Denise and she asked, how do you know when you're going through a spiritual awakening? It's a great question. Okay. 
Um, when you start questioning everything, <laughs> when you start seeing numbers, when you start seeing angel numbers, when you start to see like weird synchronistic events, when you start noticing like animal connections, when you start questioning everything, that's how you know you're waking up, you're breaking out of something. Yeah. For and yes, going through an awakening looks different for everyone, but I really do feel like if you're drawn to tarot if you're drawn to spirituality like you're in that process yeah. but i think a lot of people are a little resistant or they may think they're going crazy again the crazy thing yeah when you start for me when you start questioning everything especially religion and rules and the government and this yeah. and that yeah that's how you know I'll tell you, before my spiritual awakening, there were a lot of things that I thought people were crazy for thinking. Um, one of them being our government is not on our side. And that was one that came big in the spiritual awakening was like, you need to really take a look at what's going on around you and see that these people just have it for themselves, you know? So these things they do, they start to to open up for you and you start to see life in this completely different way and like wanting to live your life. Like for me, it was a lot of wanting to live my life in a way that I didn't think anybody would really understand except the other spiritual people. I knew I was going to lose friends over it. I knew there were going to be people that wouldn't understand, but it was so worth it. And even though it was really hard and I feel like I still feel like six years later that I'm still going through the awakening. Like there's still shadow work and stuff that has to be dealt with and, and things that, you know, I don't really know yet, but like my, my thoughts on so many things have changed. Like even aliens, that was something that like my husband would watch ancient aliens and I would be like, what are they talking about? And now I'm like, totally buy it. Totally into it. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love it. Is I mean, yeah, you start to notice that, like, yeah, the government does not have our back. Pharmaceutical, yeah. the the chemicals yeah. in our food, they're trying to kill us. Trying yeah. to kill us. And I uh, never realized any of this. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's awful, and it's like a it's a cycle, and it's like okay, so let's poison the food, make you sick. You'll go to the doctor. We'll put you on more poison, and yeah, you'll continue. Exactly back and you'll never get better we everyone has the ability to heal ourselves like we're yes. healers all of us, especially women yes you don't need any of that like all natural like i'm very and that's another thing when you start changing your diet oh yeah you start saying like this is a temple and i gotta really take care of it most yes. people are, are autopilot mm. and they have binder zone so like when you start waking up, it's like you turn off the autopilot and you take control of your vehicle. Yeah. I, and you know what? I love that because I think that there's so many people that will probably watch this and be like, I, I feel like I'm going crazy, like what you said. And I don't have anybody that can understand these things. And like, there's things that have happened to me that I know when I tell like my husband and my sister that they're like, okay, sure, sure. But it's like, no, you don't even understand. Like, I wouldn't tell you that these things are happening if they're not happening, but it's like, everything changes. Like, I can't eat um, rotisserie chicken anymore. I loved rotisserie chicken, but I can't, KFC can't eat it. Mm -mm. I know my body, like you got to listen to your body because your body yeah. will tell you if it likes something or if it doesn't, it will reject it. Same with like human beings. If your body doesn't want an energy around it, it will show you. So, and it's again, it's that awareness piece. And yes. yeah, you start to notice that the things that, you used to could tolerate, you don't tolerate anymore. And it's like, it's, it, I, I, this is like wakening on a soul level. This is beyond the mind. Yeah. This is beyond the heart. This is beyond like our physicality and the blood and our cells. And this is like, this goes way beyond, way beyond that. And most people go through an awakening and they start taking the best care of themselves on all levels. And they didn't do that before. That's right. And you know what? I even look back at before and go, Oh, I wish I would have known better then. And that's a big thing. Like we have to kind of 
move past that when we feel that of like, oh, I wish I would have done better and just do better going forward because you can't go back and change the past. But I totally like I if I could, I would go back and I wouldn't eat any of the junk that I ate. I wouldn't have taken any of the pills that I took. Like I, I loved pills because my mom loved pills. It's like, here's a pill for this and here's a pill for that. And now it's like, I only take Tylenol when I really need it. You know, it, it changes you totally. It really does. It really yeah. does. So aware of like things that you, yeah. And that's another thing, be, being aware of things that you need to change. And you're absolutely right. Like, good to look at the past and like be aware that you did things that weren't the greatest and didn't treat your body the greatest but the part of the awakening process is okay well we're going to change that exactly we're going to and i like i am like devoted to changing because you know i just want to be the best version of me that i can be and i haven't always been that and i let myself down in a lot of areas and you know, I don't ever want to do that to myself again. I totally understand. So unfortunately, we are coming to the end of our show. I could sit here and talk to you for hours, but why don't you tell the viewers where they can find you? Okay, so you can find me on um, TikTok, Mystic Molly 1111, and Instagram is mystic molly 1111 and i am verified under the name molly zancanero it's my government name um i don't share readings on facebook there's so many fake profiles out there that like I, it, it, you got to be aware of scammers and just know that i will never dm you or reach out to you if i ever follow you back i will let you know um and if you want to book with me it's mystic molly 1111.com I'm glad that you pointed that out because there are a million and one wrong, fake Mystic Molly profiles. So if anybody wants to follow the correct Mystic Molly, if you don't already, visit my profile and you can see her there and then you'll know which one. You have like 200 and something thousand followers. It's not hard to, to pick it out from the, the ones that have a thousand followers, but that's the scammers. So, so thank you so much, Molly, for being here today. I'm going to have you back again. Absolutely. I can't wait to do that. And um, as for me, if you guys would like to find me, Samantha Jones, psychic medium.com or on Etsy at beyond the bridge 11. So thank you everyone for being here. I look forward to seeing you next week. And until then, everyone have a great week. Peace and love. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of Beyond the Bridge. We hope you will join Samantha and next week's guest for more eye-opening ways to connect to the universe. Until next week, peace and love. This year, Kind Snacks is inviting you to leave behind the diet and wellness fads that are no longer serving you. Instead, grab a Kind Bar, a nutritious and delicious way to eat more of the real, whole, recommended foods that we're not eating enough of, like nuts and whole grains. Because all Kind Nut Bars lead with the first ingredient, nutrient-dense whole nuts, and they're gluten-free. With great flavors everyone will love, including caramel, almond, and sea salt, and peanut butter dark chocolate. So shut out the noise, trust your taste buds, and shop Kind Bars at Amazon today. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done.